What's one word, or one emotion that describes how you feel about graduating specifically from the journalism department? Terrified. <laughs> Graduation is supposed to be a happy time. I'm sure the gown and cap ceremony will be fun, but what happens after? Fifty of us are graduating from the Concordia Journalism Department this year. Last year, only a handful got full-time jobs upon graduation. The party will be fun, the confetti will fall, and the pictures will be cherished forever. But what happens when the fear sets in? I sure hope to become a journalist. I'm on CTV's website, CBC's website, Astral, Chorus, uh, Media Job Search Canada, Jeff Gollin. Did I mention Chorus? Right now it's kind of demoralizing actually because I can see other people in uh, my peers getting jobs, um, getting internships, getting all these great opportunities and uh, it's not for lack of trying on my part. Uh, maybe I'd just not cut, for it, cut out for it. I came into this program thinking all I wanted to do was journalism. But I look around and I see people who want it more than I do. And I don't know if I'll end up a journalist. But it's probably why I'm so panicked, because I spent three years. And all I could say is, what's next? I'm actually moving to Toronto in hopes of uh, getting a job there, because I'm an English broadcaster, so there's a bigger pool over there. But um, fingers crossed. And I actually came down with a little bout of gastro yesterday, so I've come to the conclusion that graduation has literally rendered me sick. But this isn't a story about other people. This story is also about me. In less than a month, I graduate university with my undergraduate degree in journalism and set off into the real world. But three weeks ago, I had no idea where this piece of paper would take me. I had three interviews lined up, all for major media outlets. One internship, one scholarship, and one real, full contract job. I was nervous, but it's not as if I haven't been practicing. Good morning, Montreal. It's February 13th, 2011. It's Sunny Side Up right now. Keep your sunny side I host my own up. show on Concordia Radio. Look, Quebecois leader Gilles Duceppe faced a leadership vote yesterday and came out with a 95% support. Some sovereignists just have it all. From sex kits to a website that guarantees your girlfriend happiness. You won't want to miss last minute Valentine's Day ideas. And he plays I wake up early every Sunday and try to get the best hour and a half on the air. It doesn't pay and sometimes it feels like no one's listening. But I know it's worth it. You know, had I graduated last year, it would have been nothing but trepidation. I looked at all my friends who graduated when, when I was supposed to after four years. And, you know, every time I talked to them, it was just panicked. You know, just, they were just consumed by anxiety. And I was kind of hesitant about my, I was a little nervous about my, my fifth year. Because I was like, am I falling behind? Am I not? Um, but I look at kind of what they went through, and I'm not going to go through that. I, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'm not scared about it. I'm, I'm excited. You know, the not knowing is what is, is what's exciting, right? Okay, wait, you have to come in my picture. Get in here. Take my glasses. Coming closer. But journalism oh. isn't really doom and gloom all the time. In fact, I usually have a lot of fun. Kim and I have been friends since the first day of school. Don't even ask. We're both preparing reports Hi. for a science show for our advanced TV class. No and today, yeah, I was her know. cameraman. In between classes, Kim and I dash over to the Montreal Association for the Blind. I film Kim's reporter stand-up. Well, I am! This is my light! Now being done on humans for retinal implants in Germany in hopes of restoring vision for the blind, and with the genetic research now being done right here at home, we're getting closer to finding a cure for this disease. Kimberly Lamontang, Montreal. I like the first one. Kind of screechy, eh? Screechy. <laughs> I'm loose and I'm telling this story, and you're hearing me fine, and the audio's good, and nod if you agree with me. 
Are you listening? <laughs> Do you have the headphones in? <laughs> what a nag. <laughs> I said, I said it. Acknowledge. You recording? Oh, you didn't record it. <laughs> didn't get the magic toys. <laughs> Welcome to the lab. While we're all worried about finding a job, being a full-time journalism student is a good distraction from that stress. After the reporters have shot their stories, it's time to film the show. And today, I'm one of the anchors, which involves a little bit of vanity. I'm Peter Talzi. And I'm Adam Avrashi. We begin tonight with the nuclear threat still raging on in Japan. It's been 10 days since the tsunami tore across the Asian nation, leaving over 20,000 people missing or dead and a quarter of a million homeless. They need a little more energy. Okay. Being a journalism student requires a lot of energy. You spend countless hours filming, writing, and editing, which isn't so different from real world reporting. Um, first question, you think what we're doing today is going to help us in our career? Well, yeah. Any the more you do something, the better you get at it. So, uh, obviously it helps, it'll help. Um, just from the beginning of the year until now, it's been what, eight months, and the material that you guys are producing now is substantially, dramatically better than it was eight months ago. So, the more you do, the better you do it. Have we been producing kind of strong stories or like terrible yeah, stories? Yeah, I think, um, I'm not sure that we've gotten to the point of being Arable, uh, but very close, very, very close. I'm actually surprised. Now that um, my group is graduating, so I'm making this documentary about my group graduating, um, do you think that when they came in three years ago, they had the same mindset in terms of jobs? Do you think like when they came in, um, they were aware of where the market was, and do you think they should have been? I don't know if they were. You know, that was the first year where I really looked around my classroom and said, I'm a dinosaur. In terms of you guys, I felt like, and I use this example to illustrate it, every year I would ask my 201 students, how many of you read a daily newspaper? And almost everyone would raise their hand. And that year, and probably the year before also, um, nobody raised their hand. Nobody raised their hand in my class. And yes, they were reading, and they were, well, they were reading online. Nobody was reading a daily newspaper in a hard copy. Well, students don't read. How do they expect people to want to read what they're writing if they don't read themselves? If they're not picking up newspapers and magazines themselves, who do they think their audience is? Who do they think they're writing for if they themselves are not reading? So this is a big question that I have. You know? So you're asking me, do I think they were prepared? I don't think so. Gladwell's idea of the 10,000 hour rule. Apparently if you try for 10,000 hours at anything you'll get a job. And I figure at this, this rate I'm probably getting close to having paid off at least a good chunk of that debt. So uh, hopefully you know there's a payoff in there for me. Justin Giovanetti is the editor-in-chief for one of the university's student-run papers, The Link. On top of classes he writes articles and oversees editorial content but he doesn't have a job lined up yet. What emotions do you feel when you think about graduating? Unemployment. <laughs> For the most scared? part. No, no, I'm not, not that scared. All our students who want to be journalists are journalists. All of them. It's a matter of desire and wanting. The jobs are there. We have students all across the country. I can't turn on the TV or listen to the radio without hearing one of our students. Um, if you want it, it's there. Okay, how many of us do you think are going to get jobs out of school? I have no idea. Um, the ones who want it the most. That's the ones. Reality. That's, yeah, I mean, I don't think, and th there will always be some form of journalism, and increasingly it'll feature video and audio. So, what you're learning here I think will always be useful. My experience from when I was in journalism school was that those who really wanted to be journalists became journalists. I'm going to Banff. I uh, just recently found out that I got accepted into the Chorus Entertainment Radio Work Study Program, and from May 16th to August 19th, I'm going to be uh, producing, covering their music festival over in Banff. 
with the band center. I'm very excited. Kim is the seventh person out of 50 undergraduates to land a paying summer journalism related job. Four students got internships at the Montreal Gazette, and another has a job logging tapes for CBC Local. The last person on that list is me. I got the call from CBC, and in May, I'm off to Toronto and Vancouver. I'm nervous, but I'm also excited. I just feel like there's so much out there for me to see. There's so many things that I want to do. And I just need to, you know, get out there and just explore the world and just see what there is that I can grab onto. I think I'm going to be okay. I think I'll be fine. Thank you.